Hello everyone, this is diffopt.jl, differentiating your favorite optimization problems. My name is Joaquim Dias Garcia, and this is a joint work with my fellows Mathieu Besançon, Benoit Lega, and Akshay Sharma. This talk is about this recent package that we have been working, which started as a GSOC for Akshay and now has been developed into one of our favorite um, libraries. Maybe the first question many people will, will be having is, what exactly is differentiable optimization? So in this first part of the talk, we will do a quick intro to the idea and talk about why should one care about it, what is it, and how it's done mainly in the case of this talk. So why should you care? Well, for people from operations research, this being an important topic for a few decades already. It's important, it's useful for things like sensitivity analysis or perturbation analysis, and can be used by um, areas of optimization such as bi-level optimization in, in a solution process or things like that. But also it has become more and more um, important nowadays because it's also very connected to, to many new trends in machine learning, like using optimization problems as layers in neural networks, for instance, or doing hyperparameter tuning, or even some generic learning processes. Okay, but what is it already, actually? Um, you can start with some definition of parameters, which are these theta 0 to m, and then you can define a problem which is parametric, so both of both your objective function and each of your constraints depend on these parameters. Okay, what you do when you have an optimization problem, you go on and solve it. And then you ask about what are the derivatives of your solution with respect to those parameters. Note that this is slightly different from classic uh, basic sensitivity analysis in which people compute uh, dual variables and use them as the value of the derivative of the objective function with the respect to the right hand side in, in conic programs and things like that. Here we are talking about differentiating the solutions, not the objective function, and that's with respect to some parameters that can appear in many places of the problem. Okay, how we're doing that? There are many ways to do that, but in, these, in this work here, we will focus on two main paths. One, from quadratic programming, which was first designed by Brandon Lemos and Zico Coulter um, in a paper called OptiNet, Differentiable Optimization as a Layer in Neural Networks. And the second method was developed by Akshay Agraval and friends, which is not our actually, and it's called differentiating through a cone program. Both are very interesting works, and they are actually based on some of the main ideas. Which are those two main ideas? Well, these two main ideas used by both of the works I cited previously, and are also cornerstone of alternate methods that are not considered in this work are the implicit function theorem, which allows to compute derivatives from some nonlinear inequalities, and then some way of getting the nonlinear inequalities. In case, of, in case of optimization, the classic one is the KKT optimality conditions, because they're equivalent to 
solving the optimization problem. So once you find solutions for the nonlinear KKT conditions, that's equivalent to solving an optimization problem. Um, but that that works pretty well from for some classes of pro of problems. However, for some more generic classes of programs like conic programs, you will need an extension or something I call the cousin of the KKT conditions, which are the homogeneous self-dual embedding, um, which is an extension because it's besides of doing classic stuff that KKT does, it also is able to handle um, both primal and dual infeasibilities. Okay, so now let's come back to the case of the differentiating a quadratic program, which was the work from Brandon Ramos and Zico Coulter. Well, the first step is to start with the quadratic program, which we define here as this minimization program with one objective quadratic function and two constraints, one linear inequality and another a linear equality. Then we construct the KKT conditions of this problem, which relate um, both the primal and dual variables and also has the complementary slackness over here. And then the third step is to apply the implicit function theorem on the KKT conditions. And then we obtain these conditions here, which are whatever we need to compute the derivatives. The second fundamental strategy is the one for differentiating conic programs, the one that developed by Akshay Agarwal and his co-authors. And it's actually pretty similar to the first one. It starts with a conic program now instead of a QP. Um, and then we have the primal and the dual. Once you have both of these, you can compute the homogeneous self-dual embedding. But then to do things here, we need a little bit of more work. So instead of just using straightly the homogeneous self-dual embedding, we define this composition of functions where Q is just a matrix for the self-dual homogeneous embedding. S is a map between the HSD and the solution of the problem. And then phi is a map of the homogeneous self-dual embedding and the primal dual pair, which is the solution of the primal and the dual, in this case, the variables X, S, and Y. Well, clearly, q and phi are actually simple functions. q is straightforward to differentiate and phi is very easy. s is the complicated part, the small s. And then that's the part where we need the implicit function theorem to, deriv to deriv derivate uh, the solutions from there. And even doing that, it's not super trivial. And the key um, tool for doing the work is this normalized residual map thing, which is defined in the previous work by Stephen Boyd and co-authors, and use it extensively in the work from Akshay Agarwal. Now that everybody has a minimal background to understand what is going on and why all of this matters, and actually also how it's done, we'll go into, into the practical part, which is the package diffopt.jl itself, in which we do practical differentiable optimization in Julia, which is also done in a very flexible way. And then you see, that's why we call the paper the flexible differentiable optimization in Julia. And then we will follow the same style of presentation, going through why should we care about this, what exactly it is, and how things work in this package. Well, about why, as I was saying, the other two works already provide libraries for doing the optimization derivatives. And one of the most important of them is the CVX Pi layers, which is pretty great and integrates with PyTorch, JAX, and TensorFlow. So if you're in Python, you are in a great shape. However, we want things to work in Julia also. After all, we are here in JuliaCon and JumpDev for developments in the Julia language. And we know that optimizers actually really love Jump, which is our favorite package. And we want to plug uh, their models 
in the rest of the machine learning tooling available in Julia, which includes the chain rules package and many automatic differentiation packages and machine learning uh, tools, which are some of the most incredible things that have been done in Julia. Here is what you find if you type diffop.jl in Google and then you click in the first link, you go to our GitHub um, page where we have the code for Diffopt. And if you have some time, give us a star or just add the package and start using it. Um, what, so precisely in all that framework, what Diffopt does? So Diffopt enables its users to query derivatives um, on top of MathOpt interface which is a low-level uh, library used in Jump. But once that works in MathOpt interface, that also works for free in Jump, basically. Only a few minor tweaks are required. Not on the part of the user. Most of them already done in diffopt.jl. Well, OK, and what about the classes of optimization problems that work in diffopt.jl? Well, you can write any kind of quadratic program or conic program, provided that your problem is in one of those two classes. Diffopt will automatically select the correct uh, framework to differentiate your problem and will do the work for you. Moreover, it supports both modes, both forward and backward differentiation modes that are used in all these um, machine learning and optimization areas that require this differentiation automatically done. And how do users can put their hands on in diffop.jl? Well, here I bring a very simple script that is actually in the readme of diffopt, but we can follow together to see how easy it is to use and how you can plug on your existing pipelines. Well, first thing, as in most Judea projects, you start loading your libraries. In this case, we just need jump, a solver, in this case, CLP, and diff opt itself. Then, well, as you're used to, you construct your optimization program, following whatever pipeline that you do, you add your variables, add your constraints, add your objective. Then what you do with your optimization program, yes, you optimize your optimization program, once that's optimized, you can move, fo move forward. And now you can start thinking about uh, derivatives of your problem. Well, first thing that you do is you can set uh, perturbations. In this case, we are setting perturbations associated to a primal variable. Hence, we are using reverse mode here. Um, and then we apply the reverse mode. So all the linear algebra and all the algorithms required for the automatic differentiation are done in this part. Once that computation is done, you can query your results in form of functions. So you, in this case, we're querying the um, expression associated to a constraint, the, the only constraint that you have, which is x larger or equal than 3. Um, and associated to that, a function we will return. And this, this expression is very interesting because the terms multiplying the variables correspond to the derivatives associated to those variables, while the independent terms correspond to the derivatives associated to the right-hand side of the constraint. If you want just pieces of of the derivatives, you can query either just a constant of the function or you can grab the coefficient of the function for your own purposes. We can actually do much more than that. So we can pick a problem like this uh, support vector machine problem here. And well, this is a formulation for this. Then you can write your jump model associated to this problem. And as you're used to, it's pretty similar to whatever you wrote in LaTeX. And then you can do the, uh, whatever you learned in this, in this session. So for each point in this uh, support vector machine, you can set um, your sensitivities associated to 
at a time one of each of your observations. Um, so you're associating perturbations with respect to y, or you're doing nothing. Once you do that for the entire model, you can compute the forward derivative, and then you can query back the derivatives of both w and b with respect to y. Then in this case, we're just summing their norms into this, into this vector over here and then repeat for all the points in the data set. So in this case, we'll be querying one by one the derivatives of this point. So in conclusion, what we do we expect to see? Well, this is a support vector machine. So there's only the support vectors that matter. All the other points will basically don't matter for this problem. So if you change a little bit the support vectors, you will affect the um, the coefficients that you optimized. But if you change, if you touch in other in other points of your data set, you mostly see nothing being affected in the result. And that's exactly what we get if we plot the the problem. And here it is, you, our support vector machine. So our support vectors are basically these big points, which are the ones that if we change them a little bit, they will affect the resulting uh, coefficients that we optimize. For all the other points, there will be no sensitivities. The sensitivity will be pretty much zero. Here is another example. Now ridge regression in, in, in which there is this expression here. It's pretty much like a, a, a least squares problem. But now we are adding a regularization term, um, alpha multiplying the, the squares of the coefficients of the problem. So it's, it's kind of a regularization term. As, as previously done, we can write our, our classic jump optimization problems as in this uh, left side block of code block over here. And then we repeat our procedure just like we were doing before. So for each point in our data set, we will set um, the sensitivities, in this case, in the objective function. Then we will forward differentiate the problem and query this, uh, the sensitivities with respect to W. So ultimately, we will be computing the derivatives of W with respect to Y over here. So once we vary these, the coefficient of the value of y in our data set, what happens to the w? What happens to the angular coefficient of the, of the solution? So here, here is the, the sensitivities on top of the data set. So the larger the balls, the highest the sensitivities. So you can note that all the points in the extremes of the data set, they affect much more than the points in the center, which is a well-known result in, in statistic analysis. And these points sometimes are even called uh, some outliers in the data set because they might be way too different from the others. And so small changes in these points will affect this, this, this line much more than the others because of the squared penalty of this kind of problem. In our final example over here, we demonstrate a very interesting usage of the package in which we will define a very simple function, in this case, a ReLU um, activation function, which will be defined as an optimization program. It's, it's a fairly standard activation function. It doesn't need to be done that way. It shouldn't be done that way. But as an example, we define this thing as a jump optimization program. And then we define it how to compute the derivative of this kind of, of function that depends on an optimization program. And as you can see over here, we are using the chain rules package to, to define that. And for that, we will define this function that computes the backward derivatives 
And for that, we'll use all the machinery that we presented here, which corresponds to setting derivatives, computing the derivatives, and then finally querying the derivatives and returning those values as solutions. The interesting part of that is that you can use um, this thing over here smoothly in a pipeline using Flux, for instance. So here we added this, we created this very simple um, neural network in which one of the layers is this matrix ReLU that we defined as an optimization program. And, and as you can see, it smoothly integrates with Flux and it will just work. So you, you could define any other kind of function to put inside your neural network. And, and that's the magic of this, of this thing. So it's, it's a very nice extension of optimization and can be used together with machine learning in very creative ways. So just be creative and, and create whatever you need for, for your problems. Um, all these uh, examples that I've shown here, all of them are in the tutorial sections of diffop.gl. So if you want more details on them, go into our tutorial and see by yourself um, what is over there and all of them are commented and that's very useful for you. Now I'll talk very briefly on how these things are done. And the fundamental thing for constructing all that is MathOpt interface. And why that? Well, MathOpt interface is, is extremely useful for creating layers and extensions that, that can be put one on top of each other. And that's by construction because um, it, it's even used a lot in MathOpt in interface itself due to bridges and caching optimizers and, and other um, tools that, that live inside MathOpt interface itself. But it has already been used by extensions. So for instance, the dualization.jl package is a package that works as an optimization layer. Um, what else? MathOpt interface allows you to communicate with all the solvers that work with jump. And the reason why is because all the solvers that work with jump just work because they have their own implementation of MathOpt interface on top of them. Well, third, um, MathOpt interface has very useful functionality to get um, matrix representations of your problems. And why are those useful? Well, they are useful because in this kind of, uh, of work from DiffOpt, we need the matrices to compute um, the, the derivatives because all of that comes from the problem data. Fourth, uh, MathOpt interface supports multiple classes of problems and that allowed us to represent both quadratic programs and conic programs, although MathOpt interface supports even more um, types of programs and it's being extended even right now. I think some of the other presentations in this jump that will be showing a few other extensions to some particular classes of programs. Five, all the new layers in MathOpt interface, if they are correctly implemented, they can be used to allow attributes flowing from one place to the other. Finally, if it works with MathOpt interface, it works with jump smoothly. Um, here in this little graph over here, we, I, I, I'm showing a little bit of the design internals of DiffOpt. So the DiffOpt optimizer that we, you've been seeing in all the examples, it lies on top of a cache that stores the data. And this cache communicates with two different pieces. It communicates with an inner solver through bridges because the solver can have different uh, representations that will require bridges so that the problem defined by the user is converted to the format that the inner solver likes. And also this cache communicates with something that we call a quadratic program or a conic program also through bridges because it might not be in the correct format expected by these two models that are matrix-based models.
And why are these two models important? Because it's on them that the differentiation occurs. So the user defines data that flows into both the inner solver that will solve the optimization program, like CLP or Heist, Kurobi, Express, Cplex, any solver that you'll be using, IP opt. Um, and at the same time, it flows to one of these two, either the quadratic program model or the conic program model. And the data will be stored there in the format that the differentiation requires for it to work. And once you hit the differentiate functions with the given sensitivities, it will compute the derivatives that will flow all the way back to the optimizer and will arrive for the user. This is the end of this presentation, but at the same time, it's just the beginning for diffopt.jl. So take a look in the package in our web page, and also take a look at the preprint that is available in archive. Thanks for your attention, and bye-bye.